All right, guys, so this 200 horsepower electric motor showed up in our shop today. They said it was tripping breakers, so we're going to open this thing up and see what's going on. We're always going to start with a good visual inspection, so I noticed that this little seal on the front here is kind of dry rotted. It might have got hot. It may just be old. I'm not sure. They don't have any grease fittings on these bearing covers, but this motor might be in a hard-to-reach location. They might run some long tubes where they can grease it from somewhere else. The shaft spins freely, and I don't hear any clunking going on, so that's a good step in the right direction. So this makes me think if this thing's chirping breakers, we've probably got some sort of electrical problem going on. So inside of our pecker head, we can see our lead wires are going into the electric motor itself. And behind the bars of this fan cover, I see a whole ton of oil. A lot of these electric motors run in some pretty extreme environments, so it's not uncommon for them to be pretty filthy. So this is a Toshiba 200 horse electric motor. It weighs about 2,200 pounds and pulls 233 amps at 460 volts. Now we're going to open up that pecker head, gain access to that electrical connection. We're going to bolt these together so we can do a mega ohm test. We got 12 leads and we can see that it's supposed to be rain as a delta. So we got 1, 6, 7, 12, 2, 4, 8, 10, 3, 5, 9, 11. So even though this is a 12 lead motor, it is not a dual voltage motor. It's to be ran on 460 under that delta connection only. So we're going to go ahead and find a good ground. Then we're going to clamp on here to our line leads that are going into our electric motor. We're going to set this on 500 volts and we're going to hit test and we're going to see 1.28, 1.29. So this is not a good reading for this. This means we have some sort of partial ground inside. It's dirty or it's completely shorted. That means we got to disassemble this thing. So we got to remove all of these shaft attachments. So I'm going to throw that posi lock puller on there and this thing slid right off and that never oh. happens. So something bad is going to happen today. When anything good happens, other bad things happen. And you can see the shaft is super clean. And look at that. The key just slid right out of there. That means we are going to have a really bad day today because this is going too good. We're going to pull our little rubber seal off of here. And again, this looks like heat or it could just be old, like I said, but it's totally dry rotted. We have four bolts on this drive end bearing retainer. This is going to feed right back into another bearing retainer that's behind the bearing itself. And when you pull these bolts out, it's not a bad idea to give them a sniff because if you smell it just like that, you might be able to get a little insight on what's going on inside of that electric motor. But now that we have that bearing cover punch marked, we're going to put it back on the way it was oriented when we got the electric motor. We can pull the cover off and take a look at this bearing. So this is our drive end bearing and this is a roller bearing. So this has cylindrical rollers inside of it. It doesn't have balls inside of it. This helps with radial force or radial load that's in the outward direction. We can see that it's discolored, it is pretty dirty, and just because it spins free, that does not mean that the bearing itself or that the grease that's in there is in good condition. Now this bearing has two pieces, and that inner race is going to stay on that shaft, but we're going to have to remove all of these end bell bolts. We'll be able to pry this end bell off, that bearing is going to stay inside of that housing, and the inner race is going to stay out of our shaft. Now that we have all of those bolts out, we can go ahead and remove this end bell. We're going to tap on some of these ears here. And the trick to removing these really is to take them off as evenly as possible. And it did kind of spin on me and dumped on the floor. But if you're not making a mess, you're not having fun. And now that we got that end bell off, we can take a peek inside and look at the winding and see the condition. And you can see this thing looks like it's been extremely overloaded. All the tie strings are broken. And we can't pull that back bearing retainer off because the inner race of the bearing is still on the shaft. We're going to have to remove that before we can remove the retainer. But just look at the condition of this winding. All of these tie strings are broken. This thing got extremely hot. Now, depending on the insulation system or the insulation class, these things can take an extreme amount of heat, so to see this much damage is actually impressive. We switched over to our opposite drive-in. We got a little snap ring on here to remove our plastic fan. I really dislike plastic fans, but I get it. We've definitely got some grease and oil leaking out of this end, just like the other, but the same process, we're going to remove those bearing retainer bolts. We'll be able to remove that outside bearing retainer. We can look inside here. We can see we actually got some fresh grease. We got blue grease going in that hole, out this hole, into that hole. It comes out the backside, goes into that back bearing retainer, behind the bearing, pushes the old grease out, and down into that drain. That way, the new grease is pushing out the old grease. However, I feel like people don't really go through this process until it's been too late. This is just a standard ball bearing. You can see we have rolling balls in here, not the cylindrical rollers like we did on the drive end. The process of removing the opposite drive end is basically going to be the same as removing the drive end. We're going to remove all of our end bell bolts. We'll be able to pry on this, create that gap, and push it off of that bearing. Unlike the bearing on the drive end that's going to separate into two pieces, this bearing is going to stay on the shaft and the end bell is going to come off the bearing. But you can see this thing moves just like an old 6-4 steering wheel. But I started getting a little too creative and flipping this thing upside down and we're starting to dump grease on the floor again. But like I said, if we're not making a mess, we're not having fun. Now, even though we do have some broken ties on the opposite drive end, you can see that this end has not gotten as hot as the drive end itself that we showed previously in the video. After we take the rotor out, we can do some visual investigations of this. Just make sure we're not seeing any abnormal wear. We're going to have to balance this. And now we can really get a good view of this entire winding. We can see the heat. We can see the lines on this inner race. That's our bearing inner race that's on our drive end. 
And we wanna make sure that inner race didn't get welded to the shaft from overheating, so we're gonna remove that snap ring, and then we're gonna use a torch. We're just gonna heat this up enough that we'll be able to expand that off of the shaft and pull it off. There's really not enough room to get a puller on it, sometimes between that back bearing retainer, and sometimes the puller just won't grip on the shallow edge that's beveled on the back side of that bearing. But if you take your time and you heat it evenly, we'll be able to expand that inner race just enough to be able to pull it off of the shaft. And I've showed this before and a lot of people said, nice job, you ruined the metal, you got it too hot, now you changed the molecular structure. Well, I'm touching it with my fingers. I'm not recommending that you ever do that, but it is not hot. We heated that inner race up quick enough and hot enough that we were able to expand it and pull it off, and now we can pull that other retainer off. I do not recommend that you put a puller on this retainer and try to pull that inner race of that bearing off. We can see a pretty decent fault in this side of the winding. I mean, if that wasn't there, it doesn't really matter. This thing has entirely been overloaded for far too long. This is definitely a good time to take a look at the coupled equipment and make sure we don't have any issues on that end. It's not always the motor's fault that it fails. But now that we've made it this far, we are going to have to rewind this electric motor. That means we gotta rip all those wires out, we gotta count them, we gotta put them back in exactly the way they were, and we can see this thing weighs about 1,405 pounds. It's always a good idea to weigh these things before you strip them. That way we know how much copper is inside of it and we know how much we're going to have to put in it. But duty calls and I'm going to walk away from this right now because we just got a rush motor in this little guy right here. So because this is a rush job and it just got here, we're literally stopping in our tracks with the other electric motor and we need to diagnose what is wrong with this electric motor. This is called a rush job and it happens pretty often. This is a two-speed electric motor. It rotates at 900 RPM and 1800 RPM. There's no name tag on it, and on the back side it says stream cooled. I would have thought it was dirt and oiled cooled by just looking at this fan cover. Now you guys might wonder, how do you hook up a two-speed electric motor? Well, this book right here is basically my Bible. This is the Electrical Engineering Handbook by ESA, and it will have all these electric motor connections inside of them. Even though I've memorized a good majority of all of these connections in this book, it's still good to have as a reference. Grab it at ESA.com. But let's learn this thing on its low speed. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't sound very good, does it? But we're already here, so let's run it on its high speed. It's even worse. Now when a job like this shows up, hours count. These people could be losing a lot of money per hour. I know you're gonna say it, why are you making a video? These videos are a reference. I can look back on any of these things. I can see things that we might have looked over, and I can promise you 100% they are doing more good than harm. Now we got this little tapered shiv on here, so we're going to go ahead and pull this bolt out that's actually pulling that pulley onto the face of that hub. We're going to slide it over one hole into this threaded one, and we'll be able to push it right off of there. Although I'm not too worried about breaking this piece because they're going to need to replace it, we use those jack bolts. It pushes right through this front hub here, pushes onto that back, pushes it off, and then we can go ahead and slide this right off our shaft. If we need to, we can put a little flat head right in that gap there, widen it open, and pull it off. Now minus all the rust that's on that lock nut that's on the front of that bearing there, this thing looks relatively clean. That winding looks super huge. We do have a plastic fan on the back. I'm just wiping this off to make sure that we don't have a snap ring there. I don't want to break this fan. I really dislike plastic fans. But I was able to get it off without breaking it, so we're going to go back to removing the opposite drive end of this electric motor, and we do have these little studs that come off the back, so this also holds our fan, but it also threads that end bell onto that motor frame. And inside of here, we can see, again, we have broken ties here. This means excessive heat. We have something going on with this winding. We're going to stick it on that winding analyzer and see if we can find any faults. As I said, these electric motors can deal with an extreme amount of heat, so to see those ties broken like that, that must have gotten extremely hot. We will run these 650, 700 degrees through an oven for eight hours, and it will not break those tie strings like that. And even though we did operate this thing two times at both speeds, we can see that we have an insulation resistance failure. So this means I have to go into work early tomorrow, and we are going to have to rewind this electric motor. If you want to see more, follow. Cheers, guys.